Ladies and gentlemen, we will now quickly go over to the spoken word. Just a little thing to keep our minds artistic. After all, this is a gathering of intellectuals and words are only very important to them. Anita, spoken word artist, as she walks off, could we please appreciate her with a resounding round of applause? Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chairman, I thank you for this opportunity to celebrate His Excellency with a spoken word. My name is Nita Rare. So I grew up on the streets of Rio, and every Sunday evening was an all-expense paid vacation to my mother's favorite location, the Ibom Connection. That's what we used to call it. I remember it so well because I have a photo of my father with a bypass in the background and his Nokia phone beneath his photographer's chair on which he sat upon. And he had this big happy green on his face and it's, it's one of my many favorite memories of him. That should have been 2005. I also remember the yellow flowers that guarded each elevated pavement and the clean air that greeted our nostrils every time my sisters and I played there. I remember my mother pressing a 200 Naira note into my little hand with a big unspoken creed of responsibility in her eyes and a certain promise of punishment in her smile if I failed to buy enough ice cream for my younger sisters. Well, she and my father would take a lover's stroll in the opposite direction with their eyes fixed on us. We would come together, stand at the center of the plaza, dig into our river of a heart, fish out the most expensive smile we could find, plaster it on our faces and extend it till it reached across to the corners of our eyes. And then we would look into the smiling but invisible face in the camera lens and then we would smile entrap that moment in a frame my mother would give a contented sigh and say those were the days and i suppose if i hadn't been told that architecture was for boys i would probably be designing buildings today your excellency sir I have always wondered what it would feel like to meet you in person. I had always wondered what it would be like to experience the rainbow of brilliance that you are, to soak into the kaleidoscope of the multi-wisdom of your years. I had always wondered why I needed to choose between science and art when you were an effortlessly graceful confluence of both. I remember the few times I gave my best in matching practice because, I mean, who knew? Just what if I got the chance to march in the stadium on Children's Day for Governor Victor Atta to see? That was every child's dream. And having said all of that, you can imagine the disbelief and excitement I felt when I was charged with the responsibility and honor of serenading you with a spoken word. And I know that this is me attempting to wear shoes that are a hundred times bigger than me, but fortune favors those who can grow into bigger shoes. So I'll try. <laughs> Architect, senior statesman, planner, philosopher, politician, thinker, Akwaibom's granddaddy. I made a quick journey through the archives of your achievements and I found that your dispensation was charged with being the thinking government. And I found several alibi to support the allegations. Your Excellency, sir, you have the following charges leveled against you. <laughs> that one, you so value education that your government paid the Wayek and Neko fees for every Akwaibom child while you were in office. That two, that you plotted the intriguing master plan for the city of Uyo successfully 
hatching the conspiracy to turn a village, to transform a village into a modernized model city. That three, as a visionary captain of then untapped resources, you foresaw and you called for system restructuring and your notoriety for advocacy earned you the enviable title of the apostle for resource control. That four, you successfully challenged the public conviction that one needed a political party to procure change and you climbed the ladder of leadership using your ideas as a wrong. That five, you upended the onslaught of unemployment among graduates in your era with the agricultural program and you showed across the board wisdom by establishing the rural electrification program to avoid and prevent rural urban migration while at it, a proof of your unrivaled comprehension on system functionalism and development. I may be young and not well informed in many things, but I certainly recognize greatness and celebrate it when I see it. Thank you, sir, for your necessary victories. Thank you for your needful concessions. Thank you for volunteering your plantation of a mind for the harvesting of fruitful ideas for the advancement of our land. I especially thank you and appreciate your swordsmanship in wielding truth both as a weapon and as a tool. And it is for want of time and deep respect for my very gracious host that I will ask forgiveness for the unlisted admiration of your inspiring legacy. So finally, on a personal note, I would love to give you a poem from my heart in a few lines. Sir, you are a symposium of illuminated decisions. The first of many firsts, your footsteps are a map of illumination for blossoming generations who will often pass when caught in the crossfires of confusion to ask themselves the question, how, how would the father of modern Aquibum handle this? Your voice will echo as the lead vocalist in the choir of truth for years to come, and your melody will be matched by the harmony of a hundred sons and daughters who will be unafraid to amplify their voices because your veracity nurtured their audacity. And even as the clock strikes five minutes past eight in your life today, I wish you, I wish you the most beautiful sunrises, I wish you the deepest laughters. I wish you the truest companionships. And I wish you the richest returns on your humanity investment. And I pray that we, the sons and daughters, granddaughters, grandsons, great grandsons, great granddaughters that you have raised, I pray that we make you proud. Aquibum calls you blessed, sir, and so does God. Thank you so much for an opportunity to meet a legend in person. Nita Rare.